Greetings, all you fantastic fours out there. Welcome to another lesson of maths with Mr. T and Worksheet Cloud. Let's jump into today's lesson. Little more reminders at the start of the lesson. If you want to email me, I'm Mr. T or Mr. Travis. Um, email grade four at worksheetcloud.com if there's an area of maths that you'd like me to cover during one of these lessons. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, after the lesson, click on the link above, do the worksheet, uh, make sure that you've mastered what it is that we're covering in today's lesson. The next slide is mental arithmetic for today. 10 questions, you get 40 seconds to answer them. Uh, today I've mixed up plus and minus, so make sure you check the sign as you go. Also, um, crossing over the tens barrier, so moving between numbers lower than 10 and numbers above 10 crossing either way it's an area that um, often is uh, a place that particularly uh, grade fours and fives trip up um, when it comes to mental arithmetic uh, so in the end your mental arithmetic should make you good enough that you barely even need to think about these things they're just facts that are in your head someone says what's uh, 14 minus 6 and you're just like 8 don't even think about it all right so you've got 40 seconds you just need to put the answer your time starts now. Time's up. I have a confession. I'm not sure if I gave you 40 or 50 seconds. Lost concentration for a moment. But let's go through. 12 minus 5 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13. 9 or 4 plus 9 is 13. 17 minus 8 is 9. 6 plus 7 is 13. 13 minus 7 is 6. 13 minus 6 is 7. 8 plus 7 is 15. 15 minus 8 is 7. 15 minus 7 is 8. You might have noticed that these three are sort of kind of, they're related to each other, they're pairs. So 6 plus 7 is 13, which is there. 13 minus 7 gives you 6. 13 minus 6 gives you 7. And these three are also linked in the same way. If you missed any of the answers, just rewind the video, watch it again, make sure you've got the answers. Remember, it's about improving, it's about getting better. So first of all, that means getting more and more right. And once you're getting all of them right consistently, then it's about getting them right faster. So today we're going to look at a consolidation of measurement. Uh, so measurement being uh, three things that we've covered in other lessons, uh, mass, capacity, and um, length, all of which have the same basis between converting between the different units. And so we're going to consolidate them together with some practical application. So our goals are to gain practice in practically implying conversions of units uh, of measurements. I've got all three of them over here lined up side by side. Uh, so when we look at length, we look at uh, these measurements here, kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters, decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters. Um, with the yellow ones, the highlighted ones being the ones we use most regularly. Uh, the other ones are there, but not commonly used. Uh, when we look at capacity, it's the same words, just the end part changes to liters. Uh, so kiloliters, hectoliters, decaliters, liters, deciliters, centiliters, milliliters. And it's the same, just with an L on the end. Um, I don't know if you ever have wondered when do you use meter er and when do you use meter re uh, <clears throat> largely it comes down to this is the when it's res it's the british spelling and when it's m-e-t-e-r-s then it's the american spelling same with liters and just to confuse things a little bit more, I know this is a maths lesson, not an English lesson, but uh, if you're using British English and it's kilometer, M-E-T-E-R, then it's, well, not kilometer, but if you see the word meter, um, 
it generally means the tool that is used to measure that particular thing. So meter, like a, like a measurement kind of tool, that sort of thing. Anyway, bit of a digression there. So this is the British spelling. We use um, uh, UK English when we are in South Africa. That's what we should do. Although I doubt that your teachers would mark you wrong for using American English. But the RES as opposed to the ERS. Okay, so these two liters and milliliters are the ones we use most commonly, sometimes kiloliters. I mean, imagine if we tried to talk about how many liters were in a swimming pool, that would be crazy. Or how many liters of water in, um, yeah, it, it, let's, let's not say the C because that's even in kiloliters, that would look ridiculous. Um, okay, so yeah, kiloliters also appears on like the water bowl that your parents might get every month. And then we looked at mass, which is what we, the easiest thing to do is to understand it as being weight. So when you think of the word weight, you're actually thinking of mass. And we have kilograms, hectograms, decagrams, grams, decigrams, centigrams, and milligrams, with us really just using those two, and sometimes milligrams, and you'll see that on the back of like vitamins or other kinds of medication where it's very, very small amounts. Um, but the, these two are the ones we use most frequently. And we have our um, uh, mnemonics, which are the way that we remember which one is which. So mnemonics spelt with an M on the front. It's a funny word. Um, so I've just adapted the same one. I'd love for you all to have your own one, but I didn't even make up this one. So it's one that, one's that, it's one that works for me. And as long as it works, I guess that's what counts. So and I put it in this order because it sort of makes sense that King Henry's daughters love delicious crunch caramel muffins. Uh, so they make delicious caramel muffins and then they gobble delicious caramel muffins. So it's the same except for the middle word. They love them, so they make them and then they gobble them. All right, that's how I remember. And this is just gives you an idea, or gives you a reminder of how to go between the various ones. So let's practice. When we work with more than one measurement, we need to make sure that we convert them to the same before we start. So, um, in fact, before I try and speak through an example, let's go across to the whiteboard and have a look at an example. All right, so let's look at the first one first. We've got centimeters over here, and we've got millimeters over there. And what I meant by making sure that they're the same before you add them is that we can't add centimeters and millimeters because they're different things. And we first need to make it the same thing before we go about um, adding them. So in this particular case, you could go either way. You could decide to yourself, well, I prefer working with millimeters and you could make the eight centimeters into millimeters, or you could go the other way around and make the millimeters into centimeters. Um, but let's just jot down our mnemonic on the left-hand side. So King Henry's daughter, oops, daughters, and we're looking at length, so it's um, M, so they make delicious caramel muffins, so kilometers, hectometers, decimeters, meters, decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters, so let's decide that we're going to work with uh, centimeters first, so we need to make this into centimeters so it was millimeters it's going to centimeters one jump up when we're going this way we remove zeros and when we go this way we put zeros on don't say add zeros because adding zero is the same as saying plus naught which is not going to change it I see Mr. Travis. Okay, so if I want to make eight centimeters, I'm going to, I'm going to go from millimeters to centimeters. So I'm going to take away a zero, which means that 60 millimeters becomes six centimeters. So now if I want to find the perimeter of this, uh, what I need to do is add them together. Uh, knowing that it's a rectangle, I can say that the opposite sides are the same. Now I just need to add them all together. So 8, let's say perimeter equals 8 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6. 8 and 8 is 16. 16 plus 12 
is 28. And that is centimeters. If I would have preferred to work with um, millimeters, which is also as valid an answer, then I'd want to convert my eight centimeters into millimeters. So I'd be going from centimeters to millimeters, which means I need to put a zero on. So eight centimeters becomes 80 millimeters. Then I would have worked out that the perimeter is equal to 80 plus 80 plus 60 plus 60, which gives me 280 millimeters. And if you look closely, you'll notice that the only thing that's missing is the zero, and that's because we're going between centimeters and millimeters. So I could now convert this to centimeters by taking away zero and get 28 centimeters. All right, so it's the same thing. Uh, sometimes it makes more sense to go one way, and sometimes it makes more sense to go the other way. For example, if we look at the second one, I can see that meters, because I've got thousands, it's going to convert nicely to kilometers. And because I'd rather work with small numbers, I'm going to go towards the bigger unit. So I'm going to convert both my meters into kilometers. So looking over the side at my, let me just erase the stuff that I've done around it. Looking over there on the, on the left where I've got my mnemonic, my order of the size of different things. I want to go from meters to kilometers. That is going one, two, three jumps. So I've got to take away three zeros. So that means that this is three kilometers. Same over here, take away three zeros, which means that this is four kilometers. To find the perimeter of my triangle, I'm going to add together the three sides, five plus four plus three. That gives me 12 kilometers. So the, rect the perimeter of my rectangle is 12 kilometers. This happens to be one of the Pythag triples advanced maths. You don't need to know that for a couple of years yet. I've decided to spice things up with a little bit of a trickier one over here. Just so that we've got it as well, I'm going to jot down the mnemonic. See if you can remember it before I do. So these are all meters, kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters, decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters. Now you will notice that I've got kilometers, meters, and millimeters all in this one. And I need to work with just one of those units. If you follow the logic that we worked with last time, and I'm going to choose this one to have a look at. If you work the logic, then we want to work with the biggest unit. So we want to try and make them all into kilometers. This one here goes to kilometers quite easily. So does this one, so does this one, but this one poses a problem. We want to go from meters to kilometers, which is one, two, three, which means we've got to move, take away three zeros. One, two, we only have two. All right, so perhaps it's not the most useful to try and get to kilometers. Well, let's pick the next unit, which is meters. So let's make them all into meters before we start working with it. So we need to make a kilometer into a meter. Oops, that's three jumps, so this will become 1,000 meters. This one's already in meters, so is that one. Let's make this one into meters. Oh, it's the same, one kilometer, we've already worked that out, so this one is also 1,000 meters. This one's already in meters, so now we need to make that one into meters. So meters, millimeters to meters, one, two, three. We're going to take away three zeros, one, two, three. And we're left with 4,000 meters. So now that, we, now that we've got it like that, now it's going to be quite easy to put it all together. So perimeter, when we work our perimeter, we add together all the sides. So I'm going to start at the top with 2,500 plus 
1000 plus 1000. Notice I'm ignoring my kilometers now because I've changed it into meters. Plus 1000 plus 4000 and plus 1000. Uh, you might have noticed, and actually it was a mistake, I'll fix it now, but this one, that side is twice as long as this one, and I should have actually made that a 2. Uh, if you ever come across that in a test or anything, you can check with your teacher, but the standard practice, meaning what you should normally do, is to simply write down whatever they've given you, even if it doesn't look right. So we can assume that, that the one kilometers are right, but let's because I actually deliberately chose that to be two. And then if we convert it to meters, there'll be 2000 meters. So our final one will be 2000. Now, before I add up, I'm just gonna double check. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides to this shape, this hexagon, this irregular hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm adding the correct number of things. All right. Now this one might be easier to add up if we put them all underneath each other. So I'm going to do that. So I would normally do this as a working thing on the side. So I'm going to start and do them in order. 5, 2,500, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 4,000. I'll move my screen up now. And 2,000. All right, so I need to add those together. I'm going to do it as column addition. So I'm going to add up the right column first. Naught plus naught plus naught plus naught plus naught plus naught is still naught. Next one is also all noughts. The next one has a five to start with and then nothing else. And now I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so eleven thousand five hundred. So perimeter is equal to eleven thousand five hundred meters all right please don't forget the meters otherwise you've left out the unit of measurement and if you're in my class i just mark you wrong okay so that's three practical examples uh using um conversions of length um when we've been given the shape and we need to work things out let's go down to this one over here so in fact i've made this up and I don't know that this will be a particularly tasty soup. I just made it up because I needed numbers uh, to work with in maths. Okay, you're making a vegetable soup with the following ingredients. Two liters of water, 500 mils of cream, one kilogram of potatoes, 450 milligrams of milk, sorry, milliliters of milk, 50 milliliters of oil, 650 grams of carrots, 10 grams of salt, 40 grams of stock, 100 grams of corn, and 200 grams of chopped onion. Uh, I don't think this would make a particularly nice soup. I think there's a few ingredients that are missing. Anyway, that's not the point. The question I'm going to ask you, and you will notice that I have both units of capacity as well as units of mass, um, I'm going to ask you two questions, and that, well, one question. What is the mass of the, of the solid ingredients, and what is the capacity of the, or the volume of the liquid units? So let's first of all underline all our liquid units. So those will be all the ones with liters and milliliters. That's it, those four. And looking at the solid ingredients for our mass, it's the ones underlined in green. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the ones that are liquid. Uh, we've got liters and milliliters. We're going to need to make it all. Oh, wait, I forgot. There was something else I wanted to do with my question. Uh, I want to, I was going to give you that I want it in liters. Let me quickly write that in. Okay, so how many liters of liquid are there? At no point does it mention the word capacity. Sometimes your questions won't, but because we're working with liters and milliliters, it is capacity, or it is a volume in this case. Uh, second part, how many 
kilograms of solids are there? Again, no mention of mass, but it is what we're working with. Let's start with the one that has less, which is the liquids. So we need to add two liters plus 500, let me make it a cursive L, 500 milliliters plus 450 milliliters plus 50 milliliters. And I've asked you how many liters there are. Okay, this creates a problem for us because we want to put all of them into liters, except that these don't have enough zeros to convert to lead to milliliters. I mean, to liters. But you must, teachers can be a little bit sneaky. Not sneaky, they're just testing you in a good way. Uh, and what you might find out is that when you put them all into milliliters and you add them up, then you get a number that can work nicely. So I'm going to, in fact, convert the liters to milliliters. Uh, so King Henry's daughters love delicious caramel muffins. Oops, uh, liters, liters, liters. And now I want to go from liters to milliliters. That's going down. So we're going to put three zeros on. So now ML. The rest I'm going to leave unchanged because they are all already milliliters. Okay, there we go. So now let's add those together. I would normally do that underneath in my workings. So 2000 plus 500 plus 450 plus 50. So let's add those together. All zeros in the last column. Five and five makes 10. So we put a zero and carry a one. One plus five plus four gives me zero, well, 10 carry the one, three. So I end up when I add those together with 3000 milliliters. And you might notice that that converts quite nicely into liters. So this time we're going from milliliters to liters. We're going to take three jumps. So we're taking three zeros away. And so we get our final, oops, our final answer is that the number of liters in the soup is three liters. That's a lot of liquid. And now we're going to work with um, the solid ingredients. Oopsie. All right, so our solid ingredients, we've got one kg of potatoes. Uh, and it does ask us to give it in kilograms. We've got 650 grams of carrots, 10 grams of salt, 40 grams of stock, so stock is actually salty. You wouldn't normally add both of those. Plus 100 grams of corn. Oh, I'm not writing corn. And finally, plus 200 grams. I'll squeeze that in. All right, so there's all our things that are going to get added. I have been asked to put it into kilograms, but again, you'll notice that these won't convert nicely to kilograms. So let's do this one as the change. So changing from kilograms to grams, we add three zeros. And we put the other ones down because we haven't changed them. So we're going to work those out underneath. Let's do it quickly in black. So 1,650, 10. 40, 100, and 200. Zero is in the last column. 5 plus 1 plus 4 is 10. Carry 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. Oh, let me just move this up a little bit. 1 plus 6 plus oh, 7 plus 1 plus 2 is 10. Carry 1. So 2,000 grams. And you will notice that 2,000 grams can go nicely into kilograms. It's three jumps. We get rid of three zeros. So we have two kilograms of solids in our soup. All right, that's not a lot of examples to go through, but I hope you can see how 
practically these questions are going to be asked. So you'll be given something where not all of your units of measurement are the same. And before you work with them, you need to make them the same. And sometimes you'll need to convert them to one thing and other times you'll need to convert them the other way. Um, and sometimes you might need to change your answer. Sometimes it's directed which one you must make it. All right, so this is the sort of thing. It's an application of what you've understood with the converting. So the converting is pretty straightforward. You learn um, that when you go from the big unit to the small limit, you put zeros on. When you go from small to big, you take away the zeros, remove the zeros. Um, so that's quite a straightforward thing if you remember your mnemonics. And once that's in place, you just need to make sure that you remember that before you add um, to find the perimeter or something like that, you must make sure all your units are the same. Other than that, it's fairly straightforward. Grade fours, that's all the time that we have today. Um, this is the key thing, just to remember to make the same unit before starting. Um, so that's all we have time. Reminder, if you want to email me, it's gradeforwardworksheetcloud.com. And please do that worksheet. Watching somebody else do it is a good start, but practicing yourself is where you really start putting these things into your brain and storing them so that you'll be able to use them again when you do um, units of measurement throughout this year and even next year. I mean, there's not a lot more that you will learn next year. The units change, but well, the units get bigger, more complicated. But until grade six, you won't even work with decimals. So that's all we have time for today. Grade fours, it's lovely having you with me. I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.